So how do you define muscle cars? Hi there, I'm Rick DeBrule. Welcome to the Barrett-Jackson Top 10 Series. Today, we're looking at the top 10 muscle car sales from the inaugural Barrett-Jackson Collector Car Auction in Houston, Texas. All right, so is it just high horsepower? Is it just big block? Is it only American iron? All right, you can talk about that then in the comments below, but we're gonna start with a 1969 Camaro Z28. Well, let's stay with 1969 and with Camaro and with Z28. Oh, this is an amazing car. This is lot number 780, and it's about as good as it gets for a Z28 1969. It's got the cross ram, and yeah, the four-wheel disc brakes. JL8, $500, got you. Rear discs, not to be confused with Willwards or Bear or aftermarket brakes. These are Delco Moraine disc brakes on the rear of this car. Only 206 were built this way. Now, there are no documents supporting this car as having been one, but it's absolutely correct to look at. Under the hood, look at that. That's the Crossram 302 with a couple of huge 700 CFM Holley four barrels. That's a bunch of CFM, but again, this is a 7,000 RPM engine on race, in race tune. The consigner, one of the things they've done on the car cart is they've got all the serial numbers listed for all of the parts in that engine that they're making it very clear they know exactly what kind of part is in there. It's pretty darn impressive when you're reading the car card. Pretty tiny tight, but everything's in there. Now, the front disc brakes in 1969 went from four-piston to two-piston on all Camaros except for JL8 cars. Yes, these retain the four-piston calipers used in 1968, and these are actually Corvette calipers on these things in 1969. But if you take a look at the rear wheel opening between the spokes, we'll see a shiny rotor. And that's something you'll only see on 206 JL8 cars. It's a rare sight. Enjoy it. And you realize this, this is the third year, the final evolution of this first generation Camaro. You know, they made significant changes between 67 and 68, huge changes between 68 and 69 cosmetically, but also underneath. They were improving as they went every year. Originally white, now black. This has the dual quad cross ram on the 302 V8. So very highly optioned with about everything you could get on a Z28. And it is sold for $150,000. The number nine muscle car sale from Houston, Texas. Well, this one was perfect. It was a 1970 Chevelle. This one's an SS454. That means 450 horsepower, fully authenticated. And I tell you what, people love this when it crossed the block. 1970 Chevelle, this one rolling up on the block right now is an SS454. Well, the second one of these that we have seen uh, born as a 454, which was the top of the muscle car mountain for Chevrolet uh, in 1970. They came as LS5, they came as LS6 in uh, very, very limited numbers. Matching numbers car, but something kind of unusual here. It does not have the hood pins or the functional ZL2 column induction hood. Some sources say that stuff was standard, others say no. Interestingly, here's a great look at that non cowl induction air cleaner. The dual snorkels, kind of, you know, station wagon S, but that's correct stuff. And on the underside of the non cowl induction hood, we don't see the closure, the encircle, and the valve on the back. But the domed hood is correct, but kind of weird. A numbers matching non cowl induction car. But this is also weird, too. Inside, it's a bench seat car. You gotta remember, you paid an extra 125 bucks for the buckets. This is a bench. It's also a non console car and it's a 410 axle so this is a drag strip machine and a very faithful rep, uh, recreate or excuse me restoration right down to the re uh, recreated Goodyear polyglass GT tires that were quite popular then with raised white letters yeah, that 410 rear axle ratio in the back there is a pretty steep gear. What that means, basically, it's like being on a 10-speed bicycle in first gear, pedaling your, your, your butt off, not going very far, but you can accelerate very quickly to your maximum speed. So that the 410 is probably a drag strip gear. Whoever bought this, well, wanted to go drag racing. Numbers keep climbing. We're at $145,000. Still moving. Inside the bench seat, believe it or not, is actually about 30 pounds lighter than a pair of bucket seats. And by getting rid of that center console, another 35 or 40 pounds was shed. The two-door Chevelle was the only car at Chevrolet where you could get these Z28 style stripes other than a Z28 Camaro. 
$160,000 for an original matching numbers engine authenticated by Jerry McNish, Chevelle SS454. Well, you can't talk muscle without talking Mustang. Our number eight muscle car sale from Houston, Texas was a 1967 Ford Mustang Custom. This one's a coupe, but it's got a great pro touring build. 1967 Ford Mustang Custom Coupe, one-off custom build, underwent a complete professional restoration and pro touring build with modern technology added throughout. Powered by a Ford Racing 5.0 liter XS Coyote engine, it's equipped with ported Cobra Jet heads, Cobra Jet cams, fully forged bottom end, ported to 2019 intake, and the engine's backed by a modified T56 six-speed manual transmission. Sixty-seven Ford Mustang Custom up on the block right now. Current bid one hundred and forty-five, up to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. There in the skybox, the bidder assistant has that yellow towel to get the attention of the auctioneer, who's about a football field away at the other end of the facility. Pro touring suspension, 5.0, highly modified V8 engine, fully restored and highly modified. Well, the auctioneer held that gavel for just a moment before he finally brought it down. Time for number seven in our muscle car top sales from Houston, Texas. And that last one, that 1967 Mustang was all custom. Well, this one is all original, a 1967 Camaro Z28. Right behind it, we got a 1967 Camaro Z28. And here is a well-known Camaro expert, Jerry McNish, who vets these cars for Barrett Jackson. He's going to tell you this one is really special. This vehicle's been in the 1967 Z28 Camaro registry for 30 years, and here's a man right here that can tell us a whole lot more about this. Jerry beauty. McNish, the expert on these cars. Jerry? Thank you, Craig. This car is very special. It's one of the few 67 Z28s that has its complete original drivetrain. It was owned by Ed Mueller, a well-known collector who collected some of the rarest Chevrolets on the planet. It was restored by Kevin McKay at Corvette Repair under my supervision. This car has won every award that it can win. It's won the USA One, the Atlanta Camaro Nationals. This is one special car. You won't find one any nicer. Joseph, Thank do you. your job. Well, this is the first year for the Z28. Only 602 of these were built. This one's kind of weird for two things it doesn't have. It does not have a radio, it's radio delete, and it does not have pausey. Yep, you had to pay an extra $42.15 for a limited slip differential. So when you bang gears in this thing, the right rear tire is the only one going to spin. The Z28 performance package was offered by Chevrolet to homologate that 302 for the FCCA Trans Am Series so that Roger Penske and Mark Donahue could go out and win the 67 championship. Where are the spoilers? They hadn't been produced yet when this car rolled off the assembly line. And uh, note especially the stripes right there on the trunk and how the stripe is relieved for the chrome emblem. You don't see that on later Zs. Now, if these, look, if these wheels look kind of tall and geeky, well, that's because these are 15-inch rims. Camaro Z28 was the only Camaro offered with 15-inch rims in 67. They are present and accounted for, and these are the original date-coded rims. Inside this, again, is that radio delete plate. 54 bucks for a radio, and uh, somebody who ordered this thing probably had the idea they weren't going to listen to the radio very much. Instead, they listened to that 6,000 RPM 302. That's what I do. 
Less than a thousand Z28s were built in this first year. And this one with its original drivetrain and Jerry McNish's stamp of approval is really going to command a premium. Yeah, in addition to Jerry McNish talking about the provenance, it's got tons of documentation. It's got the original dealer invoice, the window sticker, the original new vehicle inspection form. It's got copies of titles throughout the course of the year. So there is so much documentation to go along with this. And that's why the current bid is $150,000. One crazy detail is that the Z28 came with a 12-bolt rear axle and 373 gears, which are pretty steep for street use. But again, this particular car, nobody paid the 4215 for the G80 Posi. It's possible they were confused into thinking Posi was included with the Z28. It wasn't. This is a one-legger. Very weird. All right, we have two bidders on the floor. They're standing 20 feet apart, staring each other down, each talking to the collectors at the other end of the cell phones that they each represent. It is a shootout here in Texas. And we've got another bidder up in the skybox. So there are multiple bidders involved in this. You gotta keep in mind, the Z28 package cost just $358.10. If you ask me, that was money very well spent. Seventy-five thousand dollars for a 1967 Camaro Z28 going up to the skybox. Oh, well, we're talking about the top ten muscle car sales from the inaugural Barrett Jackson Collector Car Auction in Houston, Texas. Don't forget to subscribe to all the Barrett Jackson videos. And in the comments down below, we want to hear what you think makes a great muscle car or what shouldn't be a muscle car. And number six on our list, well, it turns out to be a 1969 Camaro Custom. It's got an LS7 crate engine, all kinds of great suspension work. Let's see what it sold for. Lot number 779.1, 1969 Chevrolet Camaro Custom Coupe, presented with RS styling, cow hood, Z28 badges, all new glass and triple plated chrome bumpers, powered by an LS7 crate V8 engine, made it to a Tremec six speed manual. <laughs> <laughs> Still going at 177 for the 69 Chevy Camaro Custom. This is a beautiful stance. Big fat wide tires in the back. Bright red. Lot to love. $177,000 is the hammer price. Halfway through our top 10 muscle car sales from Houston, we're up to number five, and this one was a 1970 Chevelle. Ah, but it had a magic number attached to it, LS6. That's right, 454 cubic inches, 450 horsepower. This one had less than 70,000 original miles, and we missed it on the broadcast. You only got to watch it on the live stream 
or right here. Ladies and gentlemen, moving right along to lot number 750 is a 1970 Chevy Chevelle LS6. LS6, going to need mic three, Baker. Mic three, please. This is a specialist update. This LS6 is one of only 4,475 LS6s sold in 1970, and it has 69,000 original miles, 454 cubic inch LS6 V8 engine boasting 450 horsepower, and here's Shane Ratliff. Two million. <laughs> Chris Orr, 185 Chris Orr. Some muscle cars came from the factory that way, like that LS6. Others, well, they were turned into beast of a muscle car. And that's what we have for number four, a 1967 Ford Mustang. It's a custom fastback with a 4.6 liter Terminator engine. It's got a supercharger, all kinds of suspension work. It's a 1967 Ford Mustang Custom Fastback. This 1967 Mustang Fastback is an original S-Code CT car built to pro touring standards. Power comes from a custom 4.6 liter Ford Terminator engine with an Eaton supercharger. It's an original S-Code 390 big block Mustang, but that was then, this is now. Well, the, devil, the devil's in the details. The devil is in the details. And for example, take a look at how this windshield fits into its opening. It is flush fitted and glued in. There is no chrome or bright trim uh, surrounding this windshield or the rear window. Like the Shelby GT500-esque side scoops. Current bid on that one, $150,000. 
Original S-Code car. This fastback is equipped with Wildwood. 14-inch drilled rotors. Six piston calipers in the front. 11-inch drilled rotors and four piston calipers in the rear. $200,000, Chris Orr. When it comes to muscle cars, it's hard to have too much, and that's the case with our number three muscle car sale from Houston, Texas. It was a 1971 Camaro. It was called the Ultimate 598, 598 cubic inches. It pumped out 800 horsepower. They even had a video of this car going over 200 miles an hour. And up there right now, a 1971 Camaro Custom. Let's call it the Ultimate Camaro. Yeah, they're making a big deal out of 598. Well, that's the cubic inch displacement of the all-aluminum Scott Shafiroff big block Chevy under the hood. Now, the LS1 engine is great, the Gen 3 Chevy, it's all good, but the trouble is the bore centers limit those to about 480 cubic inches. By contrast, the big block Chevy has a five-inch bore space, almost, it would bring it way out to almost 600 cubes as seen here. So the LS is good, but it can never match the rat for ultimate displacement. My favorite part about this custom are these rear quarter panels. In the Trans Am series, you could get a patch panel here to pull that fender outward for wheel clearance. Here they've done just a beautiful job and done it all in metal. To widen this car, I would say a good three inches per side uh, to harness those huge Asante hoops and the Pirelli tires that are wrapped around them. I love the six-speed manual. You've got to love that double overdrive. So this probably has a very real 200-mile-an-hour terminal velocity if you have the room to do it. Yes, those are 24s in the back. Are they too big? Well, I don't know. 800 horsepower coming out of that engine. And we can't see inside, but they actually took a dashboard from a 2010 Camaro and put that into this 1971 Custom. Indeed, there it is. Here are those squared off retro-esque gauge pods. Nicely merged into the vintage Camaro body. A lot of subtle work on the nose. Areas that would otherwise have uh, seams have been filled in. I love the projector beam inboard lamps here. Those are amazing. Those are brighter than heck. Uh, those are not just directionals. Directionals are hidden behind the grill, I believe. Well, right now, the build is being respected with a price of $4 per hour. There's over 4,000 hours in this one. Okay, $40 per hour. Still, you, could, you couldn't build this car for what is currently bid, I don't think. Boy, it doesn't look like there's a single panel on this car that has not been modified. I love the way they've taken those bumpers and set them in very slightly in the front. And like you talked about, Mike, the way those flares come over the back. This is just a beautiful build all the way around. Closed men on 200. There we have it, $200,000, the current bid. Yeah, to your point, Rick, if you could see through this chrome plating, this bumper has been sliced, sections welded, finished, ground, brass plated, then chrome plated. A lot of work in that bumper alone. Well, it sure looked like that gentleman who was bidding said, no, nah, I'm done, and then the bidding assistant talked to him for a moment. He went, yeah, let's go one more. Like the body match nitrous oxide tank in the back. You don't want to exchange that one at the speed shop. You want to have that one refilled. Otherwise, you're going to lose your matchup paint. NOS, nitrous oxide systems. Got an internet bidder. We've got somebody on the floor as well. Away he walks. Looks like he's completely done. And that gentleman handing the handling the internet bidder, his job is to make sure that the 
auctioneer knows that the internet bid is involved. It's not just a number that pops up on a screen. It's a person who's sitting there handling it. I just noticed the Z28 style stripes. They're like ghost stripes on this. Two hundred and seventeen thousand dollars for a 1971 Camaro Custom. Closing in on the number one muscle car sale from the Bear Jackson Collector Car Auction in Houston, Texas, the inaugural edition. Before we get to number one, though, we got to talk about the runner up. Number two it was a 1967 Ford Mustang, but this one was very special. It's an Eleanor tribute, a tribute to the Gone in 60 Seconds Mustang that Nicolas Cage lusted after. And this one officially licensed with a 390 cubic inch engine. Now this is a car that I previewed yesterday and I'm a big Nicolas Cage fan so I'm back looking at it again before it goes up the block. I'll channel my inner Nicolas Cage eyes here. Lot 443, a 1967 Shelby GT500 or Eleanor in the movie and you can see they started with an all new Ford body here so nothing really old Mustang about this thing. Uh, under the hood a big block Ford supercharger. Of course it has the correct Eleanor body kit and on the inside you have a beautiful interior with nitrous and the course the famous go baby go button this is an immaculate build and i imagine all of us seeing the movie 20 years ago came out of the theater wanting to buy this car and well here's your chance to buy one of the nicest ones i have ever seen well there have been not one but two gone in 60 seconds movies the original by a stuntman Toby Hallecky, who was the producer and director and star of the original movie. And of course, Eleanor was the most beloved star car. And then of course, the follow on with Nicolas Cage. But Eleanor became so famous from the movie that people started doing repop Eleanors and then uh, Denise Hallecky began taking legal action against them. So there became a program to do officially licensed Eleanor cars, and this is one of those. Now, speaking of reproductions and officially licensed things, this is a reproduction body shell. A variety of companies offer them. Of course, Ford must give them their blessing, so there's no rust hiding in this one. This is a brand new body shell. I'll tell you what, we have shot past everything else to be the number one seller of the day. We're at 180, 185,000, and still going. The cost of one of those body shells is about $17,500. And to be honest, it's a small price to pay versus trying to scrub all the rust out of an old body shell from any of the Rust Belt states. You might get lucky and find a Western shell, but for the most part, seventeen grand is a bargain. Buy that and forget about rusty old stuff. So part of the money here is in the build and the rest is in the provenance. You saw that Carol Shelby had signed the slam panel under the hood and he has signed the dash and we're at two hundred thousand dollars we're at two hundred and still going two fifteen boy and i love the way the crowd has gathered at the exit ramp they want to see the car that's getting everybody's attention and the bitter assistants, the ringmen and women, are virtually running back and forth between their bidder and the block to make sure their bid gets recorded. Love that blue key lighting in the interior and down below. This is crazy go nuts time at Barrett Jackson. $280,000 for a replica, an authorized replica of a famous movie car. But remember what we've seen in the Corvette world, the resto mods, everything being done so nicely. We're closing in, getting really close to $300,000. We got it. thousand dollars for a 1967 Ford Mustang Eleanor tribute. All right, time for the number one muscle car sale from the Bear Jackson Collector Car Auction in Houston, Texas. Turned out to be another Mustang. Turned out to be another Eleanor tribute. So how do you top that last one? Well, this time they put a modern Coyote V8 engine in, a six-speed automatic transmission. So what did it sell for? Let's watch. 
So watch what happens here with this Eleanor. Yesterday we had one sell for what? $300,000. It was by a wide margin the high sale of the day and it is headed for a collection here in Texas in Austin. And a friend of mine spoke to the buyer of that car yesterday and he said I might just come back today and buy the other one. Wilkins. Well, like under the hood we have the Coyote engine and this is basically bone stock with the uh, plastic shroud and the ram tube cover and that's okay these are very attractive engines and of course right here we see the official Eleanor Tribute Edition licensing tag here very important if you want to have one of these and make everybody happy uh, gone in 60 seconds performance yeah pretty pretty piece I like this backed up by a six-speed automatic transmission no need to drive a stick if you can enjoy this one so here's a whole lot, of Victor, of movie memorabilia to go along with the car. Photos of the movie stars in the second gone of 60 seconds. Certificate of authenticity. Movie poster. Lots here, and this all goes with the car. This car was originally built as a six-cylinder, T-code, 200 cubic inch Mustang fastback, but that was then. <laughs> this is now at least spring rear suspension, long gone, replaced by coil over shock absorbers and a four-link system. Don't you wish cars had emotions? I swear some of mine did. It's like, I'm not going to start for you today, no way. But if this one did, born as a little six-cylinder secretary Mustang, if it only knew what it was going to become years later. With those Mercury Cougar inspired full width taillights. Of course, the Mustang would have had three little slits on each side, but uh, again, Shelby Mustangs adopted this look in 1967. Looks great. Complements the width and the low lines of the fastback body. So yesterday, the Eleanor sold for 300000 and that's where we are today. Will it go over? Let's find out. Uh, the bidder on stage represents several major collections. He is on the phone uh, with the buyer he represents. Inside, we see the Go Baby Go, the red button there. And the end of it is the infamous button that Nicholas Cage's character would push to engage the nitrous oxide and another 200 or so horsepower. Inside the trunk. You Two. need nerves of steel to finish this bid off. We're over 300. It was 305, 310. Now we're up to 315. Inside the trunk, you see the C-panel mounted fuel filler has a transfer tube running to the tank. The one bidder was sitting there going, come on, finish it off, hammer it so. At the last fraction of a second, the call came through and said, yes, hit it one more time. And that bidder out there in the seats, out in the front rows, just can't believe it, because here we go. $325,000 makes that the number one selling Eleanor. Well, that'll do it for the Barry Jackson Top 10, the Top 10 Muscle Car Sales from our inaugural auction in Houston, Texas. Don't forget to click and subscribe to all the Barry Jackson videos, especially the Top 10 series. And don't forget to tell us what you think makes a muscle car in all the comments down below. And don't forget, of course, to watch the next video. It's waiting there. Do it.